the wife and bride behind the camera. I'm gonna turn okay. this over to Chris. All right, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, I believe it or not, we're brought here again, guys, behind a camera because this is gonna be a special episode today because I have Chris here and he's gonna tell you really, really an awesome segment today. And this is still the continuation of our third year wedding anniversary special. Hi, Chris. Hi, Filipino wife abroad. Are you there okay? I'm here okay. I am very excited to hear from you because this is actually the task that I'm giving you. And uh, I think this portion is just really for you because you're a foreign husband and this is our wedding culture in the Philippines. And you know, I already posted all of the events during our wedding. So this part is gonna be your part because I'm gonna ask you what you observed during our wedding. You know, it was three years ago, but now I'm gonna ask you for the first time. Uh, you already saw the entire uh, events from ceremony to this reception. So you already reviewed our videos. So I hope to hear from you what your thoughts about our wedding craze in the Philippines. So are you ready? I'm ready. So what we're gonna do here, guys, is that we're gonna flash here, um, you know, the three segments that I already shared with you. This is just only uh, about our reception, all right? So Chris is gonna tell us what he liked and dislikes. Am I correct? Uh, that's correct. Hopefully no dislikes, you know? Well, <laughs> it's it's from my American perspective, what, what I experienced and my thoughts. So I'll give you an example. Right here at this picture, these two uh, women were holding doves. Uh -huh. And they released the doves at our wedding. I've never seen that at an American wedding before. Can you play that? Let me see. What do you mean? I can't play it because that's not part of this video. Yeah, but so, that... Oh, uh, really? Okay. That's part of the other video. <laughs> this is just the I'm picture. sorry, guys. So this, is, <laughs> so, this is during the ceremony. Yeah, so I thought I was talking. But if you want to come up here and talk, feel free, man. So, a little bit of a rod mute behind a camera. So there are two doves here, and they threw these doves up as we were kissing. It was pretty spectacular. So you know, the whole family spent hours looking for doves before the wedding, and we were able to have them, and had people lined up to throw them up in the air, and they flew away. And I've never seen that before, and that was awesomely cool. And um, I thought that was that was one highlight. But what we want to do is just kind of walk through the um, the reception. What went well, what didn't go well. We had a, a decent walk to the hotel. We got some great shots um, with the photographers going over the bridge, some drone shots. Um, but what I really want to touch on is the entrance. How the wedding party came in and immediately started dancing so as they were presenting us as we were coming in as they presented the wedding party everybody just started dancing and to be honest i thought what a great way to start a reception so we immediately went into you know getting our groove thing on and everybody just coming together and and celebrating in a you know a super joyous manner everybody's grooving and I thought that should be, that was really great. Most of the time you go to American wedding and the bride and groom walk in and they say, we now present Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. And they walk up and everybody claps and they wave hi to everyone, maybe do a dance. But in this case, we literally walked in dancing and we immediately went to dancing with the rest of the wedding party. I thought that was cool. Hadn't seen it before. Wasn't quite ready for it when it happened. They just told me to dance. And uh, I got my groove thing on and we immediately went to it. So So did you have rehearsal for this? I didn't have rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, I guys, did we dance. did not have re rehearsal. So you can also see from the wedding venue, the wedding venue was great. We were in a great hotel. Um, we were able to bring in a lot of was people I heavy? to help us. And, and Pinky was not heavy, so <laughs> not heavy at all. Quite, quite petite. So, you know, we still kept uh, a nice religious feel to the whole thing. So this really shocked me. This whole, uh, 
native facade with the chair and the greeting of the, the people. Um, I didn't expect that either. I hadn't seen that before. And I don't think that's going to show in a video, but the, all the people from uh, all the attendees, there were over 200 here, came up to us as we sat in the chair and said congratulations. So got their pictures taken with us. But uh, now you can see the solo dance with us. But we had a native theme. So a lot of bamboo, a lot of rustic feel in a very nice high rise hotel. Um, lots of lots of great stuff. So I like this. I had never seen a bamboo hut type of wedding cake. Um, what I didn't like is inside the wedding cake were a bunch of forms and you couldn't really eat it. Um, we went to cut it. So yeah, I was just gonna cut it. It's okay. So do, did you also have okay. this is well, it's okay. So the bride and groom the you know this is normal for the groom to dance with the the bride's mother okay, so it's kid. and vice versa so the money dance was so let's come into right now this is the money dance and this is something that is way outside of um of anything in the u.s that we would normally do but Instead of presenting wedding gifts for the most part, although some wedding gifts were given, um, people would pin money on your clothes as you were dancing. And they pinned money on both of us. And so they were, some were in envelopes with nice notes. Others were just uh, loose bills, um, safety pinned on our clothes as we were, as we were dancing. Um, I felt, really odd having these people pin money on me. I, I, I'm not saying that I felt, um, it, it's kind of like, um, if you, it, it's, it's really odd just for an American to have this type of thing. Normally people would present money in an envelope and they would lay it on a table, but this was all out in the open. And, and, um, so it was nice. It was very appreciative of what everybody did very uncomfortable though so if you're getting married in the philippines this is gonna happen and you better be prepared for it so speaking of prepared i gotta ask you or i just really want to have um i mean curiosity because we did not talk about this we did not yeah particularly this thing you did yeah. not expect it and me neither because if you remember chris um, yeah. We actually arranged a wedding ourselves, and I, in fact, um, well, we did talk arrange, to all the attendees. You arranged the wedding. I well, just showed up. Yes, yeah, yes, so. yes, yes, yes. Physically, guys, okay. So, uh, but of course, we have here our <laughs> great men here. So, anyway, going back, guys, this is very important on this part because. Uh, yes, I'm very impressed and I'm so happy that Chris is really surprised about the money dance and in fact I am very grateful that there are some comments uh, on this video that they are really surprised about the money pinning or pinning of money on our clothes. But anyway, um, I, I remember that some of the guests are just pinning just little bill, uh, no offense, I understand that guys because um, I prior to prior to the wedding guys I told these guests like do not bring money we do not accept gifts you remember yeah that's what I was told and then all of a sudden we're doing this money yes dance, guys and we did not really expect me. this and you know so, what you know what happened why this really messed up I was actually I felt uncomfortable and I felt sorry for my guests because they did not bring money at the time because I assured them that do not bring money. We did not accept. Everything is going to be fine. We just need your presence there. And that is just going to be great for us. That's the best gift. But what happened, guys, is lesson one. Lesson one in this video. Talk to your MC. This is actually the MC's idea. The master of ceremony at the time. I'm not going to drop the name here, but yes, so he was holding a program, he did not, 
you know, he did not sit down with me prior to this wedding event. He did not sit down and talk to me like, what's going to be the plan, you know? And I did not know that we're going to have our money dance. Yeah, so, it, it was certainly not, I mean, it, it, you feel bad taking money from people. Yes. Who have less yes. than you do. So, I mean, we took it anyway because we didn't want to insult anyone. But on a brighter side, Chris, you experienced this. I did culture. experience Again, it. as I said here on, you know, on the text there on this video, I said that this is widely practiced in provinces. So, I, 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 I'm still happy that I experienced this finally. I could only see this uh, in many wedding events. All right. So, in total, in this video, the money dance impressed uh, you a lot. No, it was a combination of shock. I was impressed, but I was also, I felt guilty. I feel guilty today watching this because I wish I hadn't taken money from anybody. So, All right. But I also need to fit into the culture and I didn't want to insult anybody by, by not accepting it. So. All right, guys. So fit in with the culture. And again, the lesson there is talk to your uh, master of ceremony. Yeah, and if you're Americans, be prepared for this. You have a discussion about it because you may feel uncomfortable being put in the same situation. Yes, right. This so. is very important to foreign husbands. You consider this. And Filipina, please tell your foreign husbands that this is going to happen so during your... So, one other comment of what shocked me. Uh -huh. Oh, you can't see this here. Is... Um, Pinky, Pinky's dress had these traditional Filipina shoulder pads, and she looked like Imelda Marcos. Imelda Marcos. So Imelda Why Marcos shots? was the only person I've ever seen wear that type of dress. And then to see my wife doing the whole Imelda Marcos thing. Why are you I shocked? Think. Look at you. You're wearing what? I'm wearing a barong. And you know the barong and... But I knew I was wearing a barong, but Imelda, I didn't expect my Imelda wife Imelda to be Imelda. That is our national dress. Or a it, it, I'm sure it's a national costume. I just didn't expect the, the <laughs> whole Mel Marcos thing. I just only match with you because you're wearing Barack Obama. All right. So anyway, thank you to who? Thank you to Albert for making oh, this. Okay. Dress. Thank you to Albert. All right. So that's all in this first video. And, and I will also tell you that um, when we finished, everybody wanted uh, the clothes, the dresses, and the, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, look, you're not getting married again. Can. Uh, can I have it for my wedding? And can I have it for my reception? So yes, right. Um, those well, are the clothes that uh, got and guess clothes. what happened? Of course, <laughs> without washing it, you know, yeah, gave it, it went, away. It, it went away. You can take it all. Everything went away. So both the barong yeah. and the dress. Yeah, the barong went away too. I don't to know. To the couple. To the couple. So Secret. There, there's probably like six or seven people that could fit in that single barong as big as I am. So <laughs> so let's. Uh, let's go back and look at the next one, and this are the speakers. Okay, so we're going to, um, and Pinky will probably edit this out, but um, yeah, it's okay. Oh, no internet. So we want to. All right, so. I'm going to just touch on the speakers and how important it is at the weddings, um, who's going to speak. And, you know, I was impressed with the amount of English that was spoken for, for my benefit. Everybody was very gracious, although most people speak English. Um, and I thought your mother did a great job of welcoming everybody for us, really making people at ease. You can see how happy they were out in the crowd. Um, so in this regard, my feedback as we go through this is if you are a bit older and if you're an American, you are very likely to be asked to speak at other weddings. So if you attend somebody else's Filipino wedding and you're sitting there right before the reception, all of a sudden they're going to tap on you and say, hey, you're going to speak and you better be prepared long before you know, you're asked to go up two minutes before. It's been known to happen, and it's pretty embarrassing if you're not prepared. You don't know anything about it. So you're happened. just pulled up? Yeah, you, that happened. didn't happen here, but it happens a lot of places. So you can sitting us, see us sitting in that traditional couch and that, uh, that, that, uh, that stand. Now, your brother, um, 
Bong Bong made all of that furniture yes. and everything. Yes. And it's, he did. You know, if you want to rent it, contact Pinky's brother Bong Bong because uh -huh. he's got it. It's out for rent. So everything here, he put together, he did the decorations, did a fantastic job. So, uh, Chris so, again. Uh -huh. So, this was really awesome. The amount of time and effort the speaker gave, how heartfelt it was. And it was very meaningful uh, as we were going through, um, you know, trying to digest what was happening. But, you know, it was sage advice from somebody who's been, uh, who's, who's lived a good life and a full life. And, you know, I would encourage you to find somebody similar if you're doing a wedding, something yes. similar to this. All right. So, again, Chris is trying to say that she is actually sur not surprised, I think, that you heard some people in a wedding event like speak English. Well, she did a great job with English. Yes, and also um, my uncle. And also, your uncle who's speaking did a great job. Of course, All he's right. a, a school principal, but... Uh, and also, I wanted to say, like, um, be prepared if you are an old person attending a wedding in the Philippines. Be prepared to speak. Because they're just gonna pull you out. They will pull you yeah. out and say, you're given the speech. <laughs> And you don't know anything about one or two of the people at the uh, at the wedding. But Chris, exactly, you are right. You are actually totally you're so, right. Like there is no rehearsal for this. And and you know, I speak in public all the time. I do a great job. I've spoken in front of thousands of people. I'm pretty smooth. I am telling you, you get pulled up two minutes ahead of time and you don't know what's going on, and you say, okay, give your smooth speech. It just collapses. So be prepared. Make sure you negotiate if you're not going to speak or if you are going to speak. Okay, but I have a question for you, okay? Yeah. This is very important since you already mentioned it. I wonder, how about here in the U.S., like in wedding events? Because, you know, both of the sides are there, all right? So they are smart of your family and another smart of the uh, bride's family. And they are competing. Like, hey, you know, we have educated people here on this side. So this is also happening in the Philippines. They are competing in general. Like, I want to speak for my niece. I want to speak for my daughter. Yeah, but in general, we don't do speeches. We do toast. Oh. So the toast is the only time that is really spoken. So are you are wedding. you saying that you don't have this kind of point? We do not have this in the U.S. People don't give these long speeches in the U.S. Um, then who gives speech? Nobody gives a speech. We give the toast. There'll be several people who will give toast. Who gives thanks, like for the, you know, for 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 this guests? And you guys gonna go and gonna end the event and then thank you for coming. Well, there'll Who's be a, speak there'll be them? a DJ or the band who will lead the program. The couple is, does not talk. Um, in general, the couple does their certain things and they're directed by the DJ or the band or the wedding planner. But no, they don't talk. None of this. This is a shock I at how much talking is going on. I it, guys. All right. I, I was just, I was in shock at how much talking was going on. Everybody giving all these speeches. So guys, seriously, if you're American, if you're a Western man and you're American Filipina, this is it. This is really happening in the Philippines during your event. You expect, may, you have to observe it. Uh, the side of the bride and the side of the groom, uh, but no, because you're foreigners so or your family may not come. But if you really observe it, like they are competing most of the, you know, events like this. Uh, not competing, maybe not competing. They just really want to, you know, uh, take part in the uh, celebration. Yeah, and, and in this time, everybody is eating while the speeches are going on. <gasps> this is important. And this is really important because... It's a significant distraction as, you know, we were both super hungry and we hadn't had any food all day and come time for the wedding between us interacting and paying attention to the speeches and people presenting us with bills we had to pay in the middle of the reception, <laughs> you know, and signing things in the middle of the reception, um, it was really tough to stay focused and we never got to eat much and we were just desperately hungry so so what can you say wait 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 what about the food since you already mentioned it and it was really your number one concern 
Well, and you were so shocked. And this is Chris's biggest disappointment, guys. Listen up. All right. So my biggest disappointment, it was uh, a bit twofold. Um, this one, is very important. <laughs> well, one, I didn't have time enough to eat with the wedding plan. And I got a few bites of food at the most, and I didn't have the time to really sit back and get some food in my stomach and kind of collect myself. Um, we weren't drinking much alcohol, so it wasn't an alcohol issue. <coughs> but we were hungry. It had been a busy day. And, um, and you know, we hadn't eaten for a long time because nobody wanted to get their clothes dirty with grease. And, you know, you wanted to, to keep sharp. So that's number one, is if you're planning the wedding, make sure you allot some time to get some food for yourself or have food waiting for you after the wedding. So we should have had a buffet planned for us in our, in our honeymoon suite after the wedding. Um, and the second thing that disappointed me is that once the food started being cleared, all the food disappeared. And it wasn't taken by most of the guests, I don't think. It was taken by the staff who cleared out the food and probably took it home, including the lechon that we brought in independently. Yeah, so guys, so. as you can see, uh, so Western man, if you're a Marian Filipina, this is the lechon, and we had a very big lechon that day. And it cost like 9,000 pesos in dollar. Well, was, I don't know, $180 for the lechon. But we also had a very, very, very fine meal with, uh, I don't we know. Had we had really like, had a fine meal, guys. I mean, it was a buffet with probably 25 items on it. Yes, and right, it was, absolutely. It was a lot of entrees, there were a lot of meat, plus we bought the lechon in separately. And it was just wiped out before I probably got five bites. And another it. thing, guys, is that, you know, my family is, uh, so, um, I mean, my family is composed of many religions, okay, several religions. Like, there is a Baptist, there is Catholic, there is, um, Seventh day Adventist. So we really prepare this food for Adventists. We prepare for this cat uh, food for the Catholic. I did not actually hear any complaint about it. I was very confident of our food that day, but I already forgot <laughs> what we ate because well, we didn't get to eat much, and it was just a small selection of the food. Yes, guys. You know, the amount of our food on our table while, you know, the speech was going on from these guests, we were actually eating, as you can see in the video, but it was just little. Yeah, tiny We did food. not even have cake. I mean, this one, just yeah. a bite, and we didn't know where it went. It just all like, went. So by the time not. the program was gone, everything was finished, everything was gone. We didn't have a chance to grab any food afterwards. And we had to actually spend a lot of time selecting the food. The only thing I was involved in, in the entire wedding, was helping select the food. And it, it was a fantastic... Um, food tasting. The food tasting, when we went through with the hotel, what was going to be presented. It was actually an eloquent meal. And uh, it, was, it was great. It was a combination of traditional foods and American foods, American wedding foods. We had... The traditional Philippine foods, we had the American foods, we had a mixture of Asian foods and taste mixed in. Okay, for the Filipino, fantastic. here it is. Per person, we paid like around almost 800 pesos per person. 800 pesos. And that is really much for 800 pesos. Yeah, and we had 212 people. And 200 plus people. In fact, so, we had an excess and we paid for it. I uh, yeah, we actually had some. To be stuff. honest, this cake is not really that large, but it was really big. Well, and it were... looks big, but the reality is inside the cake only goes it's that hollow. far. Yes, it's a cardboard all the way around, and I thought, you know, in the U.S. you wouldn't have done cardboard uh, inside. Uh, you know, it it was. But anyway, so we the cut design. Light, tiny slices and yes. they were very short, so the cake was a shock to us, and this was not actually edible. Not in the edible. U.S., the whole thing would have been edible. Yes. But anyway, so, uh, the couple who made it is really artistic. And I requested uh, it. It was absolutely beautiful cake, and it fit the motif, and everything was going into yes, it. Yes, it's my so theme. It gets a 10 on the appearance. For one little cake I got in my mouth, it gets a 9 on taste, and I'd give them maybe a 3 in actual quantity. There really guys, wasn't a lot of cake there. we forgot where it went. 
And the cake just disappeared too. Disappeared. And it not only that, there were some small separate cakes <laughs> thrown it. Yes, there were several and small were cakes. Gone. I didn't remember everything, one. everything everything went. Gone. Um, and lechon guys, lechon, lechon. I really asked my family, and um, whoever brought it at home, time. nobody because my family was really also uncomfortable because honestly it was the first time that we had you know our wedding in this kind of hotel um and we are really on top of that hotel it was really a high-end uh, part of the hotel so my family was like very uncomfortable moving around how much more of picking up this food because the food is in the kitchen of the staff of this hotel yeah. and the staff could only control everything yeah, so, so where did our lechon go I don't know. Well, we do. We do know that the staff cleaned out everything. Uh, that was that was dinner for their families that night. But we had a three hundred and sixty degree view from a, 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 that floor. Entire city. The entire floor, and we were on the like the tenth, ninth, or tenth floor. We had one of the highest buildings in the city, and you could see everything. It was absolutely gorgeous. But so that's that's my lesson. Make sure you have time to eat. Make sure. That somebody brings you some of everything Don't in your room and, some, and have food afterwards you better have some you better have a plan for eating because when we were done with the wedding all the restaurants had closed and um, the room service wasn't available to us so we were we went to bed hungry so guys disappointingly guys nobody took care of us at a table like during the time we were eating nobody took yeah. care of us and I cannot just really blame my family again because they well, were really uncomfortable moving. We around. had we had people helping us plan the wedding that weren't part of yeah, the family. Nobody, was, we did there's not. There's a lot of moving pieces here, and they were eating at the same time, and the speeches were being given. Yes. So, um, getting on. So, you know, the cake was beautiful. Just make sure you have enough cake for everybody. Yeah. Um, and so, you know. That's as deep as it went. I had a tough time cutting it. So yeah, but I'm confident of actually the taste because the I, taste was I, excellent. I like, I like her actually. All right. Um, so shout out this to is Giselle. this is traditional in the U.S. Um, but you are actually supposed to, um, you know. Oh my god! <laughs> you're supposed to push it in the, each other's face. And, yeah, uh, I saw it. No, I and so that's the. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's kind of mean. That's, and, that's yeah, I know. Uh, but you were I don't ready want to ruin for my it. makeup. Yeah, you were ready for it. Don't ruin your makeup. So, yes. And so um, next we had the toast. Now, this was a traditional American toast. And it was done a lot in, uh, um, in the, the, the native language. And this is Pinky's dear friend. But people tell silly stories during the toast. And this was very traditional. And, you know, the unlimited rice story is legendary. And it was fun to hear it directly from, from Pinky's dear friend. So, you know, make sure you're ready for a nice, um, you know, a nice toast and, and be prepared for any story that may come up. This is one of the few occasions in the Philippines where it's okay to embarrass each other. So that's the one thing I've learned. If you're in the Philippines, in general, people don't embarrass each other. They're very polite in that manner. Where? In the Philippines, people don't embarrass each other. Yeah. They don't kid each other to where they look bad. Everybody wants to save face. This is one of the few occasions I have ever seen where somebody actually told a funny story that was a bit embarrassing. Shout out to Joy, Joy. Yeah. Like you to... embarrassed me. <laughs> You know, Guys, I actually did not. I, I know the story. Look at the course. shop. That's Pinky's shop. Oh my God. <laughs> not the unlimited rice story. Please. Please don't. Really? I, I mean, I know the, 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 the unlimited rice story, and I even told Chris about it. Not until, you know, I heard this from my friend and the way she described the situation. And I started like, oh, wait a minute. I realized, like, what, I, what, what happened to me before? Oh my God. That is really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so, but so that, that was lots of fun, and we appreciate the uh, speech, um, and it was great having, but that was very much the same, and then, uh, so, by the way, uh, who, what about here at American Wedding, um, 
Uh, are you also embarrassing some Yeah, you part? you know, you there are some people, this is when everybody gets a chance to speak when you do the toast. The best man usually gives the speech, but um, and then everybody else chips in. And that's usually when they tell a funny story. Um, they'll congratulate the couple and, and wish them well, and then another person will tell the funny wow, stories. Okay. And usually the friends tell the funny stories and the family members uh -huh. are pretty respectful and wish you well. And the older the people, the more respectful they are. And they're, they're ah, all right. So we had great singers throughout the program, a lot of Pinky's friends. It was nice to see, you know, some of the songs that, Where that kind of fit in. It, yeah, it was like my fifth bite. <laughs> That's all, that was all we had. The plate was there and then it was gone because we were off to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. And so, oh, time to sign. Here, <laughs> so, sign guys, this sign is what again? The bill. The bill. Sign the bill. <laughs> So and that's we, that's our wedding. That's the person who helped Pinky uh, plan the wedding and execute the wedding. So we did have help. She brought in some people. They were, they were her uh, former roommate in uh, Marie. In shout out to Marie. You know she was wonderful. She came and and flew in and spent several days with us yes. to help uh, to help Pinky. So you know she she helped with the wedding and lost her roommate at the same time. So are so. you gonna? So are you gonna? Uh, alarm, you know, the foreign husband to, uh, what, to, uh, to be aware of this signing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be aware. The bills will come and the signings will so come. So you mean, like, read carefully, what, before signing? Yeah, read careful. <laughs> because maybe you'll be surprised the next day, like, your bill is going to go up, like, for two million pesos. Yeah, yeah, oh so. Oh, my gosh. So that bill was actually, I believe that was for the additional plates. Yeah. We had some guests that uh, normally you invite 200, maybe 180 show up. But in our case, 212 showed up. Yeah, so, so guys, we actually like invited for 200 officially. So 200, but it actually like there were excess of 12 people times 700. So you're going to pay them. And the seats are already counted. The plates are already counted. Yes, yeah, so they had to set up tables and uh, for the. We actually people. did not know if that it was really true, you know. Well, I mean, there was a lot of people there. They didn't come to the actual wedding because there was a typhoon happening, yeah. and we just got a slim, just a small amount of good weather for our wedding, and there were people hanging back, so they weren't at the wedding, but they were all at the reception. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I don't blame them. I wouldn't have gone in. I didn't. I wouldn't want to be caught in the typhoon either. Um, but the musical program was great. There was a lot of people who wanted to sing, who came out and sang and helped us, and um, they were very respectful. And Look at you! Kids, <laughs> we're gonna show you the dance again. Okay, can the can dance. you show us the dance? <laughs> Look. Let's see it. So were you shocked? It's Korean song. And at the time, like, this song was this very was famous. Yeah, I loved having the kids there. We had a bunch of chocolates for the kids and some toys and stuff. It was just a ball. And a uh, some of those kids could really move. I mean, you know, it's amazing what some of these three, four, five-year-old kids can do. Yeah. So, um, but... So, I'm so proud of Chris. Look, look at him there, guys. He's really... I'm, uh, you know, my groove thing he's grooving. On. Yeah, you know. So no shame. So my family, my family was really impressed and had really having fun watching him. He was well, they've not, never seen anybody this size dance. He was not too dry, you know. Yeah, no. Although he ate just very little of the joint, but yeah, I was saying okay. Groove. You know. Yeah. <laughs> stayed thin and I, I kept the groove going. So, Although your barong was really tight. <laughs> the barong. The barong. The Bronx split Sorry here. Sorry for my laugh here. Yeah, you know, so, just... and that was, uh, but that's okay. I, I went out and bought some subsequently that are a little bit uh, Yeah, we had an extra. We do, uh, we've got Chris some Chris is really ones, the best so. in this kind of thing, you know, preparing. So Chris is already holding this bags. But I didn't uh, prepare anything. I, the only thing I did was help Pinky pick out the food. Um, and then we looked at the wedding venue, but... Um, you know, I uh, I didn't really. So tito 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 tita tita. You know, I really didn't do anything uh, anything of significance outside of um, you know paying for a lot of it. Um, All right, wow. Uh, 
So guys, this is just only our first time to react to our wedding <laughs> after three years. And uh, this is just the first time that we are, you know, um, yeah, we, recalling all we that We hadn't happened. even looked at this together yes. since, I don't know, a few weeks after the wedding. We scrambled trying to find the video. It took us an hour to find the video. And thank God it was on the cloud. So we were able to pull Oh, so by the way, I forgot. Uh, I already saw the projector there because we have our videography team and we hired them, guys, and we paid like. Anyway, we also have our segment for the expenses that we spent on our wedding. But I just really want to say that um, uh, the, the thing that we did not like about this video is that Rockwell, one of the singers, actually, um, if you watch this video, the quality of the sound is really, really awful. I mean, it's... You know, but, you know, things happen. Not everything is perfect. But um, Not but everything they did... is perfect, but if you can check and if you're ready enough, then you can make your yeah. event happy and, and, you know, perfect. But what I'm trying to say is, actually, the problem, because during the speech, those speakers had a very good, you know, audio. But with the singers, actually, it was really bad. So I don't know if it is uh, the hotel's problem, or the, the the hotel's audio sound system, the sound system, or well, the videography guess, editing. Yeah, you may want to do a mic check to make sure it works okay. Yeah, before. so check the uh, sound system, guys. But you can see it was a great wedding, um, and we'll get into the cost of what this was uh, at another video. Um, and there's also some pieces you're missing. We had some contests and some giveaways. Yeah, were a lot of fun. And so guys, again, look at that. Our draft there, our, our you know our stage there. Uh, normally, if you can see uh, the wedding event in a hotel like this, they have a very elegant decoration. But in our case, it's like provincial setup. Yeah, and there were giveaways for everyone, and and. You know, it'd be good if we, uh, when you do the segment, to have some pictures of the giveaways. Which yes, because this is our theme, got. guys. This is our theme. Yeah, um, so the theme, we originally planned on doing this out in the province. In my province. So my yeah. parents' province. So. Um, and we had made arrangements, but it just didn't work out yes. the way we wanted it to. So we moved it into the city, which also worked out great. And, I think uh, so. And so it was, a, it was a nice wedding. It was a reasonable, it was an elegant wedding. Everybody had a good time, and uh, you know the food. From what I hear from everybody, was delicious. I agree. Yes, Didn't, I was confident you know, that everybody was really uh, stuffed, happy yes. going home with a very big um, souvenir from us. Yep. So I'm just gonna share with you guys how you know the souvenir looks like. Um, I actually did not post or share you know our speech with Chris because I cry there and I don't want it's not really that important but we gave thanks to everybody in that you know in that segment or in that part so that's all uh, the biggest lesson that you learned entirely from these three videos Chris is um, there's a lot of similarities with the American weddings but the pinning of the money was completely shocking the amount of speeches given was a bit shocking. Um, and the fact that more people show up than you invite shocked me. So nothing it's else not is happening really shocking. I've never, you know, you get some wedding crashers, but never more people than you invite, particularly with this many. You know, if you invite 200, usually 10% don't show up. They have family emergencies. They just don't feel like coming. Much less that many more. Um, and they, they weren't people with one and a date. We had that covered. It was it was just it was kind of interesting to see. So yes, guys. So you Filipina, you tell your foreign husband that you should be aware of the situation that. So pay know, plan, expect to pay for ten percent more. Yes. So the point is, fair. you better have a table and you better have some food enough for ten percent more than you invited. Yes. yes so yes, my yes. family couldn't come. They would have liked to have come. But I'm a bit old, and it's really not that important. My, my family is a little bit older. Um, so, But we had a subsequent yes. get-together when we got to the U.S. where my family had a chance to meet and greet the Pinky, and we had uh, a big celebration with gifts. And yes. Covered, my family was covered as well. 
So. That's right. So guys, don't you know? Yeah, don't, uh, don't read wonder, anything into Don't that. wonder why you know Abel's family is not here because actually they gave me a very big party when I got here and I was really surprised and yeah, I was really touched. You know, with their preparation, all of his siblings came and they welcomed me really, really, really well. So you know, I but, felt at home. So the one thing I told Pinky when we started this process is she could have whatever wedding she wanted. And so this was her version of the wedding she had wanted. And that uh, well, I was happy to, to, to be a part of. Yes, so. right. So for the next segment, uh, for the next segment, guys, we're just going to share with you um, our reaction to our wedding ceremony. So Chris is going to talk about it again and compare it to American weddings. Yeah, so. and then we you'll have one on cost. And yeah, we'll share what the actual cost that is was. the last. Yeah, part everybody of our always wants to. The first question is how much, how much, how much. Yeah. So, and we'll. You that's know, very important. We won't give any hints until that video. Yes, right. Okay, so that's all. So again, this is Philip and Wife Bride. Thank you for coming to our premiere. So Chris, want to say bye. So this is Philip and Wife Bride behind the camera. Thank you for watching and have a nice one.